Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Sheep Cottage. So today we're going to engrave on metal again. Y'all have been loving these videos and I thought I would give you another idea. This time we're going to use the Cricut Maker with the engraving tip on the quick swap housing. Now remember, a few weeks ago, I engraved on my Cricut Explorer Air 2 using an engraving tool. I will link to that video in the description below so that you can head there if you only have an Explorer machine and see how to do basically the same project with that. Along with that video link, I will have a links for everything I'm using in the description below. So today we're gonna to make a necklace with birthstones. So we're gonna engrave names on the necklace and then we're gonna use the Impress Art Hammer along with a really cool crystal setting kit that has birthstones in it that you can use to embellish your engraved projects. So we're gonna do a necklace for this example but like the same Christmas ornaments I did a few weeks ago, you could add birthstones to those as well. So don't think that this project is only for a necklace. You can get this crystal kit and start adding birthstones to various other projects as well. We're gonna make a little stacked necklace with names and birthstones. I really think you're gonna love this. It'll make an amazing, amazing gift idea. So first let's look at the supplies we're gonna use. So you will need the blanks to add your names and birthstones to. And I'm gonna use two different sizes and you'll see why in a minute. Then to add the birthstones, you're gonna need the crystal setter kit, which comes with the birthstone gems in three sizes, along with a punch for each size. You'll probably want a pair of tweezers because the stones are pretty small. You will need some type of adhesive to set the stones onto the blanks. Then on the blanks, we're gonna engrave them. I'm gonna use my Cricut Maker. I did a video on engraving metal with the Cricut Explore, and I will link to that in the description below. I'm gonna use my engraving tip with a quick swap housing with my Cricut Maker. You'll also need a stamp enamel marker to make that engraving pop out a little bit more. And when we engrave, you'll need the strong grip mat along with strong grip transfer tape to hold those into place. Then for using the crystal setting kit, we're gonna need a hammer as well as a stamping block. And then we'll need to assemble our necklace. To do that, I'm gonna have a chain, some jump rings, and some jewelry pliers. So now let's take a look in Design Space at designing our engraving. So one of my blanks is one inch and the other is three quarters of an inch. I made these engraving and I will show you why in a minute. And you will need to have a maker machine chosen to make them an engraving line type. So then I added some text. I went ahead and picked out a font that is a writing font. To find writing fonts, you go to Cricut Fonts, click Filters, and choose Writing. Then pick a font you like. The one I'm using is DTC Fall and Flare, so you could use that font if you would like. And then I made the font fairly small. So what's gonna happen is these two are gonna stack on top of each other. So I wanna make sure that my writing does not extend over into this one. So I might even make it a little smaller just to make sure that it does not overlap. And so now my font is a 9.47. So we'll go ahead and make that 9.5. And then we'll make the font for the other one, 9.5 as well. The next thing we wanna do is make these fonts fit these circles. So I'm gonna pull the font up onto the circle and then I'm going to pick the curve option. It will be a negative curve because you want it to go down and you want it to go around this circle pretty much exactly. So you can play with the curvature and the diameter until you get something that looks the way you want it to look. So that looks about right. So we'll leave that one just like that. And we'll go ahead and pull this one up and curve it as well. So the curvature of this one is different from the curvature of this one. So the curvature of this one is a negative 0.721. And the curvature I ended up on this one is a negative 0.421. That's because the diameters of the circles are two completely different things. So you don't wanna make them the same curvature. So now we're gonna pick the font and I want to pick engrave. Again, pick this font and pick engrave. So now we are ready. Now, I have not attached these two together and I, in fact, I don't want to. So we're gonna leave these all as just engrave lines. Then we're gonna go ahead and click make it and take a look at what this means on our mat. All right, so we have the two circles. We have the two names. What I wanna do is take these circles and move them to where I'm going to put them on the mat. So let's say this first one I am going to put it where the top and the side are on the one inch marks. So top on the one inch mark, 
side on the one inch mark. And then I will move, this is the larger of the two circles, so it gets this name. And then I'm gonna locate this name into place on the circle. I do have another video about kind of perfecting your location and some tips and tricks and hacks on that. So you can jump down in the description below and find that video and try those hacks if you have any issues. So once I get those located, like that looks good, that's approximately where I want my engraving, I'm gonna click the circles and do hide selected. Click the circle, hide selected. So now all I'm left with is my engraving of my names. And what I wanna do is put those circles exactly where I had them on this mat on my actual mat so that when I engrave, they'll be in the correct location. I have found that strong grip transfer tape works best for this. So I put it on my strong grip mat and I just cut a little piece off because I don't need much for this at all. And we just wanna get that really well stuck to the mat. You can use a brayer for this. So we're just gonna bray that down and then we wanna peel the backing paper off of the transfer tape. So we'll just leave the transfer tape stuck to the mat and peel that backing paper back. Then once that's on there, we're gonna locate the blanks just as we located them in Design Space a few minutes ago. So the one and one inch mark for our largest one. You can see I have that located at the one and one inch mark. And then the other one I located at the one and three inch mark. And you do wanna put the hole at the top. And then once these are on that strong grip transfer tape, we're gonna press those down really well. I like to go over them with a brayer once again. And now let's take a look at our machine settings. So now that we have those circles on our mat, we'll click continue. And once the maker is connected, we'll hit browse on materials. And this is most like stainless steel. So we're gonna pick that. You would just pick whatever material or blank that you choose and click done. Now it tells us to load our engraving tool in clamp B and load our mat. So let's head to our machine and see how this works. So now that everything's ready, I have my engraving tip with quick swap housing installed in my maker. And now I can load my mat. So now that the maker is ready, we'll click the go button to start engraving. You just press the unload button to remove your mat. Now let's take a closer look at the results. Here are the results of that engraving and I am actually fairly happy with the location. One of the names on the larger piece ran off just a little bit, but I, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna run with this. So now let's take a look at finishing these necklaces. First, you wanna peel up this transfer tape and I like to just lay it over my blanks and press it down. This picks up any small bits of debris that may have happened during the engraving process. And then peel that back. And then just remove the entire thing from the mat, popping off your engraved pieces. Let's start with making this engraving stand out a little bit more with our stamp enamel marker. So we're just gonna rub it onto the engraving, allow that to sit a few minutes, and then wipe it back off. This marker will get down in the engraving and make it pop just a little bit more. I'm using black, but there are several colors available. Once it's dried just a minute or two, we'll just wipe off all that excess. Then all you're left with is a darker engraving on your piece. Now it's time to add an indention where each of the stones will go. So I have my three stones picked. I'm using the middle kit, which is the 2.5 millimeter stone. This kit does have a guide on the back to tell you which birthstone is for which month, so you don't have to worry about that. I did need that. All right, so what you're gonna do is take the punch. The punch, again, comes with the kit along with the stones, and you're gonna decide where you want your stones. So I'm gonna put two stones on this bottom one, one stone on the top. Just wanna locate the punch where you want your stone. I have it on the stamping block. I'm gonna strike it with the hammer. You're just making a slight indention where you want that stone to go. You don't even have to go very deep, just strike it a few times and make an indention so it's easier to set your stones. Then I'll repeat the same process with the punch and the hammer for each of my stones. Once you have all your indentions made, then you'll add a drop of glue to each of the indentions. 
Then just set each stone right on top in the right location. Easier to use tweezers to place each of your stones. And then we're just gonna allow these to dry before we assemble the necklace. There we have our necklace pieces ready to dry. Then I just opened my jump ring and I'm gonna add the top one first, then the bottom one, then I'm gonna add the entire thing to a chain and just close the jump ring. And there you can see the completed necklace ready for gift giving. All right, so now you're ready to make your own birthstone necklace with your Cricut machine, an engraving tool, and the kit from Impress Art that allows you to add those birthstones. It really adds like something really amazing to the project in my opinion. So it's definitely a kit that I would pick up if you are working on engraving just about any metal project. So you can add it to a necklace in this case, you could add it to those bracelets that we have made in the past. You could add the crystals to the stocking ornaments that we made a few weeks ago, like tons of different blank options on the Impress Art website. And you can add the crystal setting kit to those and add a little something extra special to your projects. Now, if you're looking for the supplies for this, you're gonna look in the description below the video. If you are watching on computer, there's gonna be a description and a show more button. Click that show more button. If you're watching on mobile, there's probably an arrow to expand the description or depending on how you're watching, you might have to swipe up on the video. Either way, you should see a long description, supplies, links to other videos, all the information that you need to be successful making this project. So if this video helped you, be sure to give us a thumbs up, ask any questions you have in the comment section below, and as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button for our YouTube channel. We have videos like this all the time, and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.